Hello friends, so today we are back with another topic and today's topic is brain fever. So you must be wondering what is brain fever? Like we have heard of fever, viral fever, but what is brain fever? So brain fever is is the other you know layman's term for what is called as meningoencephalitis. So just to explain, so when there is infection of the brain or the coverings of the brain that is called meninges, it is called as meningoencephalitis or it is also referred to as brain fever. So what are the main symptoms in a person with brain fever? So as the name suggests, the most common symptom is fever. Along with fever, there could be other symptoms like headache, nausea or vomiting. And when the infection is more severe, then alertness reduces and the person can become semi-conscious or in the severe brain infection, it, they can even become unconscious or comatose and then other things can be other complications can be fits or convulsions and sometimes weakness of arms or legs and they can have paralysis so basically what it means is that the symptoms can range from very mild symptoms of just mild fever headache and on the severe side it can lead to convulsions paralysis and even coma stage so it is potentially a disabling disease and if not treated on time it can even be fatal in many cases so the question comes to us so how to recognize and how do we diagnose and how we can treat this condition so first of all if it is only fever and no other symptoms the most common reason is viral fever you need not worry and you can take somatic treatment with paracetamol and in other home remedies and wait for two to three days but if along with the fever there is other symptom like say headache or severe headache even vomiting then possibly it will be a good idea to consult a doctor because uh, we also look for certain signs what is called as neck stiffness so when we turn the bend the neck and head there will be stiffness at the back of the neck so few signs are there which can alert us that it may not be a simple fever it could be a brain fever and whenever we suspect brain fever there are two or three tests we do to confirm the diagnosis so the first thing is to do a brain scan and usually the scan preferred is MRI because it can show the enhancement or the spread of inflammation or infection to the brain covering and that can be clearly seen on the MRI and then after that to identify the organism because the brain fever it is caused by various infections like viruses, bacteria, TB that is tuberculosis, fungus so there are different kinds of infective agents which cause the brain fever. So for that we do something called as lumbar puncture where a needle is inserted in the lower back then we draw the CSF that is cerebrospinal fluid and that fluid is examined for the presence of various infections and within the first 24 to 48 hours many results come some infective agents uh, reports may take little longer time also and so based on these two important tests the doctor is able to decide that what type of infection it is and then the treatment should be started. So one thing we have noted is that the earliest we start the antibiotic or the specific agent against the, against the infection, that much better is the outcome. So there should not be any delay in starting the specific antibiotics. In the beginning, one may not be very sure what infection it is. So then we start something called as empirical treatment where based on the assumption and based on the CSF reports, the most likely agent could be TB or bacteria or fungus or virus. And then we start the specific agents and uh, as I said, the earlier we start the treatment, better is the expected outcome. So I think that is the most important part here. And then uh, as I said, in most cases, once we start treatment early, response also is good. And uh, depending on the type of infection, we give the treatment for specific period of time. And that your doctor will you know, tell, uh, tell you how long to take the treatment. And the important thing is the person may improve, but we should not discontinue the treatment halfway. Like for example, TB of the brain or what is called tuberculous meningitis, the treatment has to extend for 18 months. The person may feel good in 2 or 3 months, but if we stop the treatment, there can be again relapses and recurrences. And the next infection that occurs, that could be very difficult to treat and what is called as multi-drug resistant uh, TB. So the full course of uh, treatment should be taken. There, there can be few complications like sometimes, as I said, convulsions, then we have to give medicines for uh, treating or preventing the further fits or convulsions and sometimes the CSF, the brain water can become more what is called as hydrocephalus. So that by a simp uh, simple shunt surgery, the water has to be drained. So all those things can be treated. 
So in summary, what I would like to say is that if it is a simple fever, that is fine. But along with fever, if somebody has got severe headache, vomiting, at that stage, please consult a doctor and make sure that it is not brain fever. Or if it is diagnosed as brain fever also, no need to panic. Early start of treatment can result in excellent outcome. And then one can become healthy very soon. So I hope you learned something from this uh, topic. And uh, thank you.